Welcome everybody to take a note. Updates to reading and math tools on the Mat Connect. Thank you for joining us today for this first Mat Connect webinar of the year. We have two presenters with us today. First is Eric Beauchamp, Director of Product Management with Humanware. And with him, Roger Steinberg, Low Vision Product Manager for Humanware. And they're going to be demonstrating a lot of new features, maybe some things that are new to you and some things that are absolutely brand new. So let's get into our learning objectives. So we're going to work to understand the basics of the books and notes applications, as well as the purpose. You know, what do they do? How do you use them? Recognize and appreciate the ability to bookmark and annotate reading materials. Identify the steps to set one of the three available calculators as the default. Know, the, know that user data can be shared and how to turn sharing on and off. And finally, some challenges some things that may be things that you're dealing with. Uh, students need a way to identify and review key information in text, like new vocabulary words or themes. Different students require the different ways for annotating text. Navigating back to an important passage in a long text can be difficult for students using magnification. Completing paper worksheets can create a barrier to learning. Uh, so we're going to learn today how to use a lot of these features to make these things easier for you. Now, before we let Roger begin the presentation, we do have one poll question we want to ask you. We want to know how many different applications do your students use to access downloaded books? Now, these can be uh, ones that are specific to low vision and blindness. They can be mainstream. Doesn't matter. We just want to know how many different applications do your students use to access downloaded books? Zero, one, two to four, or five plus. So, how many different applications do your students use to access downloaded books? Zero, one, two to, two to four, or five plus? Let's give us an idea how much of these you're using. And um, it doesn't matter what kind of service it is. We just want to know how many you're using. And as we get this information, as soon as this closes, we'll turn this over to Roger to start talking about the book features. All right, you guys were very quick to answer this question. 90% of you have already participated. Uh, for the question, how many different applications do your students use to access downloaded books? The majority said two to four applications. Uh, that was 68% of responses. 16% said just one application and 16% also shared zero applications for downloading books. So thanks for taking that poll. That gives Roger some great understanding of who's in the room before he begins his presentation. So Roger, we hand it over to you. Thanks, Betsy Ann and Paul. Uh, it's great to be with everyone today and we're super excited to be here. Uh, we are in fact going to be sharing a lot of new functionalities uh, that were actually uh, gone live yesterday uh, for uh, the Mac Connect. Um, and they're going to be focused on uh, tools to use in the books application, um, as well as some updates to the calculator. And uh, we will cover just about every update that was made in, in Mac Connect uh, as of yesterday. So uh, without a lot of further ado, I'm going to switch my camera here and slide over across the room here so I can work at my Mac Connect. Just a moment to get over here. Um, so is everyone, hopefully everyone's seeing okay. Uh, I'm sure you guys will let me know if we're not seeing okay, but I'm going to navigate um, in my Mac Connect to my books application. And we did ask how many services are being used. Um, for those that haven't used any services at all yet, uh, you'll notice down below that you have different subscriptions, uh, services that you can sign up for. I'm sorry, manage my libraries. Go to your books and you can see I'm signed up for Bookshare, RNIB and other book providers. So these were the applications uh, that Paul mentioned earlier. Um, but once you've downloaded books for use with your students, uh, you can come back to the Mac Connect and click on My Books. 
And I'm going to use two books today. The first uh, being that it's February and African American History Month is the Atlas of African American History. And we will click on there to open this book up. Now, the first tool um, that I'm going to cover is uh, not necessarily a, an annotation page, but it is certainly uh, an advantageous addition to the product to help students navigate a book. Um, to the right, I can tap this icon on the far right lower corner uh, that will take me to our book navigation menu or our go to page options. Um, and we've had table of contents previously, which allows me to go to a specific section of the book, assuming that the publisher has included a table of contents. So I can scroll down through uh, the different chapter headings that are available to me and find a chapter such as um, uh, the black population on the eve and click on that. So this may be a chapter that my teacher has asked me to uh, start reading uh, and I can just go in my table of contents, find it and go to that page to start reading. As soon as I'm there, I have my typical reading tools to tap on. Pause to stop that. I can zoom in further, zoom out. All my tools are available to me. Tap the return button to go back to a full page view and also have access to settings to make uh, different uh, adjustments that a student may need. So my contrast right now is white on black, but maybe I need to have black text on yellow background. So I can switch to that in my textbook. Notice that my image is going to retain its normal color. I'm going to go back to my default colors for presentation purposes here. So you have access to all of this. So Again, I noted that the first uh, tool is one that has existed for some time is the table of contents, but we are now taking full advantage of other additions that publishers may have put into books so that you can go to a specific page. So I'm going to tap go to page and I can, I can use my Bluetooth keyboard here to type in a specific page. So my teacher asked me to read pages 100 to 105 today, and I can jump straight to that specific page. So this allows for teachers to refine their assignments down to the page number level. Again, assuming that the publisher has included a table of contents and page numbers uh, for, for use in their books. There is one more way to navigate a book now, and that is a pages list where we have just listed them out and you can scroll to a specific page, tap onto it and go directly to that page. I did want to also point out that wherever I leave off in a book, so let's say I was reading and I've been changing pages and this is the last page that I finished up on and I close out my book to go do something else. So I'll just go back to my menu as an example here and come back in and then I'll come back into my Atlas of African American History we're going to pick up right where we left off in the book. So that's a nice feature for students that they don't have to remember uh, where they are in a book. So that is the go to page function uh, that is going to allow for much quicker navigation of books for students. So the next new tool that is available for marking or annotating books is our bookmark tool. And that is in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. And uh, let me know if any questions come in as I'm going along. I prefer to answer as we go. But okay. let's say, say that I am reading along. I'm going to press on focusing here and have my book reading along. I'm going to pause right there. Operation Iraqi Freedom. I think that's going to be something important to me. Um, so I can tap my bookmark tool tap on there and type in, see how I can do here, operation. Should leave an error in there. Freedom. I'm gonna leave that error and save that. And uh, I can't see it right now, but if I come back to my full page view of my book, at the beginning of the line where that was inserted, a bookmark icon has been placed on the page. So I can now continue reading 
and come back to Operation Iraqi Freedom at a later point in time. So let's say that I continue reading on here. Turn the page. If I can get my gesture to go here, I've got my tripod in the way and it's making it difficult to get onto the page here. Urgh. Well, start in the middle. Don't don't start in. Yeah, just like flipping a page in a book. Uh. <laughs> well, we can do this too. Let's cheat. I'm going to cheat, okay, Eric? Because my gesture skills are not working today. Probably because my fingers are sweating. <laughs> but uh, so let's say that I've continued reading on, and I'm going to start over here now, just to to, to use another example. So we have the great migration, another important concept uh, that I want to recall or be able to come back to later. So again, I can add another bookmark. Now notice, I don't know if you'll recall, but when I first created that one, there were no bookmarks in my book. So I only had the option to add, but now that I've got a bookmark in place, I have a go to add, rename, delete. And as I create more, I'll have the option to delete all bookmarks. So let's add another bookmark here. So these can be useful for the student to come back to important information um, uh, as well as uh, to review or save things that they want to use in a research paper or to write about at a later point in time. So it just gets them back to that area of the text that they might want to navigate to. So we continue reading on, we can add more. So I'm going to tap my bookmark tool again just to show you that those two uh, Bookmarks are in place there, the Great Migration and Operation Iraqi Feedum. So we'll tap that one. It'll take us back to where we left off on that page. But you'll recall that it was misnamed. So third option in my list is the ability to rename a bookmark. So here is Operation Iraqi Freedom, or what is supposed to be Freedom. So I'm going to tap in there and correct that. So now if I come back to my go to or any of those menus where these bookmarks appear, it will be spelled correctly. So I have the ability to change them to whatever I may need for them to be. Also, I can go and delete them individually. And as I pointed out earlier, I can delete all of my bookmarks at one time. Now, um, bookmarks can be used in any number of way uh, for specific educational tasks. Um, so again, to go back to key information, remember where you left off or mark things, but it can also be used for planning assignments um, and uh, how, how, uh, how I expect for a student to read it. So for example, I could insert bookmarks at a time for a student that are date driven so that they know, okay, this is where I need to start reading on February 18th. I'm actually gonna come back to that skill in just a couple of moments. So those are uh, the go-to page with table of contents and go to specific pages options and the bookmark tool for navigation around a book. So the bookmark is really the first simple form of uh, notations for books, but also for navigating a book. Excuse me, uh, Roger. Yes, sir. Can you describe the two buttons for the table of contents or the book navigation and the bookmark uh, application for those that uh, are visually impaired and are assisting uh, in the webinar? Sure. Again, uh, your table of contents or what we will call go to page uh, uh, navigation icon is in the lower right uh, of the toolbar in the lower right corner of the screen. So it's the far right of the toolbar um, at the bottom of the interface. That will open up the book navigation where they go to page functionality with table of contents first, go to page second and pages list third in the menu. I'll hit the return button in the upper left corner to come back to my book again. And the bookmark icon for placing a bookmark or managing your bookmarks is in the upper right corner of the uh, Mac Connect screen. And if I tap that, that will open my bookmarks menu of options, which again has go to, add, rename, delete, and delete all bookmarks as options. And again, uh, if there are no bookmarks in place, the only item that will appear in the menu initially will be the ability to add a bookmark.
Okay. Do we have any questions coming in from our attendees on bookmarks at this point? Well, we had one question which I answered in the chat, but the question was, all uh, these are all new uh, features, correct? So, um, Roger, can you, can you just talk a bit about what's new and what's not new? <laughs> <laughs> sure. So, uh, yeah, the bookmark tool is entirely new with this release. Um, and then in our go to page functionality, we had table of contents navigation previously, uh, but we've extended that to go to page in the pages list for books that include both a table of contents and uh, the pagination for navigating in books. Okay. Awesome. All right. So the uh, next tools that we've added, and I'm going to go back to a full page view of, of my book here is, and here you can see in the upper right corner, I know that there's a bookmark here. So maybe I'm reading along and forgot I placed a bookmark there. Could be a visual reminder that there's something important on this page that I want to be thinking about. Um, but the, the, the next tool is where we get into sort of heavy duty annotations, if you will. So um, in our toolbar or across the bottom of the screen, uh, again, on the far left, we have a return, which will take us back to our books menu to open a different book. We have our little gears second from the left that will go into our settings uh, that we can use when we're in books. But the third is, is a new functionality that's added with this release, and that is the ability to annotate your book. And we have three different uh, types of annotations that can be added to a downloaded book. So I will tap that tool, and my toolbar will shrink down now. Uh, to the far left, I have a return button that will take me back to the main toolbars. Then I have what looks like a pencil or a pen uh, icon, followed by what in the very center of the bottom row of tools will be an eraser tool. Second in from the right will be a palette. And then on the end is a thickness tool. So quickly, let's navigate through these fairly rapidly. So by default, when I come here, uh, it opens up in a uh, pencil pen mode for annotating. If I tap that, it's going to switch to what we will call our highlighter. Uh, tool and that shows a very thick line underneath to indicate that we are writing in a much thicker way as a highlighter would. And I'm going to tap it one more time now and it will show a large T. And again, this is the second uh, icon in from the left on the toolbar. That T means that I can insert a text note and that's a text note where I can use my Bluetooth keyboard or my on-screen keyboard to type in a text-based note. I'm going to tap that again and go back to that regular pencil mode, um, which is the mode that we're in. The center tool is the eraser and the palette tool. I'm going to tap that now. The default is black, but let's say that I like, I prefer blue, as you might have noticed on my shirt when, when I was on my other camera, blue is my favorite color. So I'm going to go ahead and use blue. And this will allow me to use my stylus to write directly on my book. So I'm just gonna write the word test here with a big asterisk next to it. So now I can leave behind a big note that just reminds me that this is going to be on my test. And I put it right next to this. I'm even gonna draw a little arrow. The teacher told me to make sure I understand the invasion of Iraq and when it's taking place, or maybe they've even shown this uh, on, on the whiteboard in the front of the classroom and I'm following along on my Mac Connect. I can make a note uh, to remind myself that this is really important when I go back to review. Um, let's say that I, I made a mistake there and now the teacher said, no, you know what, we're not going to study that. The next tool over I'll tap on is the erase uh, tool. It's right in the center bottom row. Uh, all the other tool options have grayed out now. I could take my stylus and just drag it across the markup that I made and erase it, or I can use my finger to do the same. So any of the writing that I've done uh, with my stylus previously can also be done with uh, the touch of a finger and, and handwriting through the fingertip on the screen. I tap my erase button again and I come back to having my full, full tool set available to me as well. Now we've seen the, the tool as it is by default for its width. We've erased it, we've changed its color to blue. Again, Roger's favorite. On the far right of the toolbar at the bottom of the interface, is the thickness. By default, it comes in thin. 
we can adjust it to medium, wide, and very wide. And again, maybe we'll switch it to wide just so that everyone can see what that looks like. I'm gonna leave it in the pen mode right now. And we will again, just make that note just to give a sense of the thickness of what wide looks like compared to narrow. So there we go. So let's continue on here. See if I can turn the page, Eric. Oh, see, there's a good, there's a good object lesson right there. I'm gonna grab my eraser tool, erase my line that I just drew on the page. If I can get it to go, there we go. And because I'm in the markup mode, so that's, that's a good non-example there of what to do. Um, I am in markup mode and I was still uh, having my marker turned on when I tried to uh, do a gesture on the page and it drew a line across the page. So I must exit my markup or my annotation mode to go back into a reading mode on the page. So that was a, actually a good example of, um, of what not to do or how to use the product properly. Uh, so I'm gonna just uh, go to another page here and notice when I go to go to page, um, it's showing me right where I am in the book. Let's say I need know that I need to go to page 115 next. I'm going to skip over there. And now I'm going to tap my annotation tool again, uh, again, third from the left, and I'm going to tap that pen and switch it now. So here we have that, uh, that highlighter, which shows the pen coming down with a very thick line underneath. And I, I will go over to my palette again, and you'll notice that it's not blue because I'm in highlighter mode now, it's yellow, standard sort of highlighter color. So we have a variety of different colors that we can choose from. Uh, I'm going to leave, leave at yellow uh, to start out with uh, as the default here. And here again, we have options for the thickness of our highlighter. I'm going to switch to medium. So as I'm reading along on this page, I could choose to highlight um, certain passages. So for example, reconstruction has been called the nadir. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here. Reconstruction has been called the nadir of American relations. So I can use my stylus to draw across there and create a big old highlight to draw my attention back to that the next time uh, that I come to the to this section of the book. So maybe I'm going to use uh, uh, yellow for these big themes, but I also want my student to identify important acronyms that they, they need to study. Oops, and there's a good example again. I'm gonna to switch to my eraser, erase that out and turn the eraser off. I'm going to uh, switch my color now to blue again. I'm gonna use Roger's favorite colors today. And I'm going to switch to a very thin markup with my highlighter. But I, I want my students to use blue to identify key acronyms that they need to know. So for example, National Association for the Advancement of Colored People and the National Negro Business League. So we can uh, instruct students over time to use different highlighters to identify different key information in the materials they're reading for when they want to go back and study. Do we have any questions on uh, highlights or, or uh, the pen markup at this point? Uh, and none from the participant, but I do have one. Sure. Uh, are all these uh, annotations uh, saved in the book once I get out of that book? Let's do this, Eric. It's a good question. I'm going to go back. I'm hitting the return button, which is at the far left of my toolbar. I'm going to tap it one more time. I'm going to go all the way back out to my books. And we've closed the book now. I'm going to reopen my book. Remember that it will open where I left off. So we have to just give it a moment to access the book and open it up. And we come right back to where we left off. And there's the yellow highlights that we made just a moment ago, as well as the two additional uh, that I marked off a couple of um, acronyms that I want to be able to remember uh, potentially for a test or for future use. They can now, and they've been saved, but they can be removed. So I'm going to tap that markup tool one more time. So it's third in from the left on my toolbar. And 
remember, uh, by default, we're going to start with the pen, but we have highlights on our page right now. So if I were, so I'm in pen mode right now. If I tap my eraser and drag my stylus across my highlights, nothing is going to happen. So the eraser is specific to the type of markup that's on the page. It's an important point I wanted to bring out today. So let's tap that tool again and switch to our highlight tool because these are highlights on the page. Now, if I tap my erase button, I can go back in and say, I'm going to erase this yellow highlight and those blue highlights. Oh, oh it's not wanting to erase. I think it's color specific as well. So let's go to yellow, okay. Let's see if we can get this one to go away. There it goes. Just had to hit it right, I guess. So now we've cleaned up all of our highlights on the page. Can we go back? So to Eric's point, they are retained on the page uh, so that you can come back to them later on. So that would be key importance. Just like when we just came back, notice our bookmarks are still in place as well. So I just tap my bookmark icon in the upper right. I'll go to go to, and my two bookmarks also are still available. So I can tap great migration, uh, which happens to be the page we're on, and we're straight back to where we wanted to be in the book. Okay. Um, does anybody uh, have other uses maybe in the chat that they can share uh, that they might think of for highlighters? Uh, I don't want to give away everything. I've got a couple others that I've certainly seen used in classrooms, but I was just wondering if anybody on, online has um, some ways that they could think of using these highlight tools when their students are reading books. What about if I'm using the keyboard? What about if I'm using the keyboard? Well, that's a great example, Eric. So I'm going, to pack, I'm going to use my text notes in a little different way. So I'm going to back out of this particular book and I'm going to go into my vocabulary workbook. So it's just another book that I downloaded. In this case, it came from Bookshare. And if I go into, if I want to know what page I'm on, there's a note at the top that says to the teacher, we can have it, have that read that. I can pause it here. But if I tap my, my table of contents, uh, and look at my uh, pages list, I can see that I'm on page one. So basically, whenever you download a book, it's automatically going to open to the very first page. And that was this first page is where I left off. And I've actually looked in this uh, book previously. But let's tap my bookmark tool right now. And you'll notice this is a, a new book for us in today's presentation. Um, but I have a full bookmarks menu here. And if you'll recall, if there were no bookmarks, the only option would be to add. So I, I have taught my student, hey, I've got your stuff ready for you, educationally ready to go. So go into your work, vocabulary workbook and tap go to. And here you can see that as a teacher, I have created, and Eric, you gave me a good segue here, um, some bookmarks. And today is the 18th. I already did the 17th yesterday. So I'm gonna to go to February 18th and tap on that. And here's a page that a teacher has left for me. I can read it. When adding a suffix to a word that ends with a silent key, drop the E if the suffix begins with a vowel. Example. So we can continue reading on there. It starts off with the instructions. Maybe we want to zoom out on our page to get a good view of, um, of that page. Oops, there we go. So. Here's, here are the instructions that we were reading because we're in column reading mode, uh, which is something that you can go into your settings. Notice that even in this workbook, I have the same tool set that I had when I was in my African uh, Atlas, uh, African History Atlas. Um, so here's all the instructions that it's showing right now that I could read through. But this particular workbook down at the bottom happens to have some fill in the blank exercises to work with suffixes. So as an example, uh, we could be having this to read along and then we can go back to fill it in. So I'm going to go ahead and address Eric's question right now uh, with the use of a keyboard. Uh, rather than doing it within a textbook, I think this may be a slightly better example where I can tap on my annotation tool, third from the left, and it opens up again uh, in that pen mode. Uh, so I, I want to switch to one, one click. I get the highlighter, I'll tap it again, and I get to the T. Now I'm in text mode. So this is where I can type in text notes. I still have an erase tool, so I can erase text notes that I make. 
I can change the color. Uh, I'm going to be typing text in there, so it's going to come in in black. Uh, let's go to blue again, just because, again, that's Roger's favorite. And then I can change my text size. So let's go to a medium text size. So at this point, I can use this text tool to tap. So the first exercise is drag our dog blank home the old skull of an animal. Our dog blank home the old skull of an animal. Our dog drag home the, so I have to make drag fit in there and make sense. So what I can do is press my finger on the screen and I think we want it to be dragged. So I'll type dragged with my keyboard, hit the arrow in the top right, and there it is, it's placed in the page. I can tap onto it, it will turn red and I can reload it, Kate it right into the blank there. And now I've got that note in place. You can I reduce want... the size of it if you want to by yes. selecting it and doing a pinch and zoom, which is a pretty cool. Anywhere in the screen, you don't have to be in the in the square. It can be anywhere in the screen. Do a pinch and zoom. It's gonna adjust. You can adjust the size of uh, what you're writing. It's a pretty and cool feature. So you can tell Eric is a Jedi master. So I did not know that function was there. So thank you, Eric. That's a, a good tip right there. So I've reduced it down so it fits in there nicely. And that's when it's active, right? So it's tapped on. So we know that that's where the zoom is taking place. Um, so I can tap again and I can go mirror, mirror. John was blank doing what he was supposed to be doing. John was mirror doing what he was supposed to be doing. Okay, I think I know what that is. So again, I press my finger there and we'll just do this. And I know that I misspelled that and I'll send it and here again. So I might want to just go and adjust my font size down, but again, that's a real cool feature to be able to do it with a pinch and zoom, tap outside of it. And then we also have our erase tool here. So we can grab our erase tool and go in and erase all of those out of the way again. So this is an example of using the text note tool uh, to complete a workshop. Am I still there? Sorry. Yeah, we've still got okay. you. Okay, I, I heard a beep and I was like, uh oh, did I lose, <laughs> did I lose, lose my connection there? No, nope, you're um, all good. So yeah, so uh, that is the text note tool. Again, uh, when you're in there, I'm in the erase now to get back to a full tool set, I push the return button, which will always in the toolbar at the bottom be to the far left. Uh, so that's sort of a quick tour. I'm still interested if anybody had other ideas for the use of, of highlighters or even bookmarks for that matter. No one chatted any ideas, but one person uh, did mention that uh, this feature is awesome and will be very helpful for her students. That's good to hear. Hopefully, uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Uh, and hopefully, as we continue to develop, you can give us more ideas of how to make them even better um, for students and certainly for the, meet those instructional needs that, uh, that need to be handled in the classroom to ensure that our students are learning and progressing. So here, the book, the book application that Roger is, um, is using has a connection to Bookshare. Uh, most of the people in the US use Bookshare, but uh, we do, uh, like Roger was showing, we do offer a lot more libraries if ever uh, the student has, for example, in Canada, uh, access to a, the Sela library, you can connect to that. And we use the API from Dolphin, which is the same API as Easy Reader app on, on the, on tablets or smart smartphones. Right. So I just scrolled through the list there. It's it's quite extensive with a lot of options there. So there's certainly ones who explore Project Gutenberg is a lot of free resources. So but I have I have a question for you, Roger, and that could be maybe helpful uh, for people uh, watching. Um, when I saw you tap on the play button and the, the text was starting to read, it was in a column mode. How would I change it to a, a page mode? reading so that open. I can see so that I, that I can see some graphics or images in my books while I'm reading. Right. So I'm opening my book up right now. It will come back into full page mode. Um, in your settings, I will open that up. First thing is information that will tell me about the book contrast colors where we can set the visual settings like black uh, text on a yellow background. I have my speech set for documents only right now. I can turn it off altogether 
or I can have it on all the time so that it's talking every time I change a menu um, for presentation purposes, it's not great. Uh, my voice is Heather right now, so uh, you can change your voice uh, in your other settings. Um, but right now coming down, my reading mode is in column. So that's why it's changing my view there uh, to narrow down to a column. I can go all the way to a line reading mode. If I wanted to have my page all the time, I can just tap page in return and come back out and it will be in a page reading mode. And it's going to, now it's going to move the page as it goes along, which some find uh, a little bit, I think it can be a little bit disconcerting in that mode because things start to hop around a little bit. So that's why I think the column mode is more, uh, more uh, commonly used. But in page mode, you'll have your graphics. Right. Yep. Yep. And this page doesn't have a graphic onto it, of course. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yep. Um, so at this point, I was going to go ahead and uh, have our next poll question. Right, here we go. Paul can throw that up there. And uh, I will switch to my other camera and throw it over to Eric, who's going to take over for a small portion of our presentation today. Right. Thanks, Roger. So this question involves the topic that we were just talking about with these book features. So we want to know uh, what are the different ways to annotate a downloaded book? What are the different ways to annotate a downloaded book? Your choices are the highlighter, text notes, pen, bookmarks, none of the above, or all of the above. So what are the different ways to annotate a downloaded book? Highlighter, text notes, pen, bookmarks, None of those or all of those. And while you're answering that question, feel free to drop any questions you have in the chat. Uh, when we come back, we're going to be looking, uh, we're gonna hand it over to Eric for the next part of our Matt Connect webinar today. All right, about 50% have participated in the, in the poll question. Uh, for the question, what are the different ways to annotate a downloaded book? 100% of our audience said all of the above. So highlighter, text notes, pen, bookmarks, all of them. So we're going to turn it over to Eric to make sure that we are correct. Well, I'm going to first ask Roger, is this correct, Roger? That is correct. Awesome. All right, that, that just uh, speaks to the quality of students that we have today. They picked up on that. <laughs> or you have a good teacher. <laughs> awesome. So I'm going to switch to my uh, device. So hello, everyone. I'm going to switch to my Mat Connect right now. I have a uh, black on yellow uh, color scheme on mine. And Roger showed you how to annotate books, uh, but the annotation tool is, um, is, is in more than just in the books application. It's gonna be in the gallery. It will be also in the note-taking application, which I'm gonna start off with that first. The note-taking uh, ap note application is in the um, gallery, the main gallery. If you scroll to the uh, left, you'll see a notes um, icon. If you tap on that, this is an awesome application because you can just start off with a blank page and have your student take notes instead of using paper and losing the paper, everything's gonna be stored in here. And uh, when I click on the icon, the application starts and on the top right corner of the screen, you have a plus button. So if I tap on the plus button, there's a different tier options that you, can, that you can do. You can create a new note, which is gonna create a blank page for you right in, the gal in, in that gallery or in that uh, note application. Or you can create a new category, which is gonna create for you a new folder, and then you can classify or categorize all your notes. So let's say I have notes for math, then I can create a folder for math. If I have notes for French class, I can create a, a French class folder and put all my notes that um, go for the math or for French in that same uh, category or folder. For my, my example right now, I'm just gonna create a new note. So if I create a new note, I tap on that, 
like I said, it's going to create a blank page. And you at the bottom on the uh, button banner, you have the same kind of buttons that you had in the books application that Roger had. So from left to right, uh, you have the back button, the settings button, a tool to write. So either a pen, a highlighter, or a text um, to, to enter text with a, a keyboard, or the plus and the minus to zoom in or out. So if I, I can use right now the pen uh, to um, tap on the pen to start writing a note. And I can use either my finger or my stylus, just like uh, Roger was, was doing previously on, um, on the book. And um, yeah, and then once I get out of that note, it will be stored inside my notes application right in, at the root. So this is a pretty cool application. You can classify, have your students all classify their own notes. That you can have young students drawing if they want to on, on a blank page and changing colors, changing thickness, and um, make them have doing art on the Mad Connect. So if I go back to my uh, gallery, uh, not well, my main menu, I will go and search for the gallery application, which I'm gonna scroll to the right and tap on gallery. On my in my gallery, I have already uh, imported a math question document, which is right here, my math question document. If I open it up, I have two pages in my math um, document. And these two pages have, well, there's four questions in total. So if I select, let's say my first page, I can start reading my first question out. So I multiply a whole number by three, which of the following could be my answer. So really the student can start working on this uh, worksheet uh, by tapping on the little pen icon, which is at the bottom, the third icon at the bottom, tap on that. And I can start either with my finger, my stylus, start trying to find the answer. So I know that if I take 328 divided by three, I will get my answer. If this is equal to, uh, if it's divisible by three, it will be my answer. So in this case, uh, this one is divisible by three and I will have, it is not. So I, <laughs> I, got, I got mixed up here, um, but then I can select my answer uh, by either highlighting or circling the right answer. Let's say I'm gonna make a mistake here on my, on my answer sheet and I'm gonna circle my D uh, question here, my D answer. And once I go back, this will be all saved in my page and I can submit that afterwards uh, for uh, my, my teacher to uh, grade me. And I'm gonna ask a little question. Am I spotted right now? Is everybody seeing me full screen or are you seeing two screens? No, uh, you're full screen. I'm full screen? Yep. Okay, because I, I see your, your camera also, uh, Roger. That's fine. Um, so let's go to the second page because I wanna show you how to uh, maybe use the graphing calculator that we have on the Mat Connect. And my last question here is, graph the following questions, equations. So A, X is equal to sine Y. So how am I gonna do that? Uh, I can maybe use a pen again and maybe draw it out, put an axis, and I'm gonna think it's this. I can draw it out. But to see if my answer is right or to have a better image of what this uh, equation will be, I can use a graphing calculator that we have on the Mat Connect. And if I, can, how can I do that and append it to my uh, assignment? Is I go back to my book or my document, and at the top right corner, there's a, a gear button uh, that I can tap on, and in this menu you will have two options, either go to page or an append uh, function. So I'm gonna tap on append. And here on append, you have three options, either to append a new page or to append a new capture. So I can use the camera and capture uh, a new page, or I can use a, a new function graph. Uh, so I'm gonna do function graph. So I'm gonna tap on function graph. 
And my calculator right now is already set as a graphing calculator for you because I want to have a graphing um, output. But if it wasn't, um, you can go here at the top left corner, there are two buttons. One is the back button and one's the settings button. So you tap on the little gear button for the settings button and you'll be able to change it. But in my case, it does not work because it's already set to graphing because that's what I wanted to do in the gallery. So here in my graphing calculator, I will write my equation, which is x equals two sine y, close my parenthesis, and then tap on the graph function. It will graph out my equation. See, I was wrong with my answer here, and I can confirm that I was wrong. The sine wave is on the other side. It's on the y-axis. So I want to append this to my uh, homework. So you just click on the uh, Save button, which is the second button at the bottom, and it will save it or, or append it to my homework, which I'm back into, uh, which uh, this is my answer. I'm going to go back. I will change my drawing here just for completeness. I will zoom in and I will use the erase uh, function to erase all this and I will do another graph. And this is what it's gonna look like. And I can even say C graph one. I don't know if you notice, but when I'm in the annotation tool, I'm writing to pan around, I use two fingers. So I can use two fingers to pan around my document, or I can even zoom in using my two fingers, and I can go wherever I want in the document and write whatever I want without leaving the annotation tool. So if I go back, that will be saved uh, in my page, and I will go back to my graphing or my graph that I did with my calculator. I'm gonna tap on that page, and I will write on this page graph number one as a reference. Whoops, great. My pen just broke. <laughs> <laughs> while, you're doing, while, while you're doing that, Eric, we did have a question that came through. I, I did answer it, but um, okay. can, you, can you use the keyboard in notes? Absolutely. And that's an awesome feature. I was at a training. I'm a hockey coach and uh, I, I always followed like training to, uh, improve my my knowledge base on how to uh, coach hockey and I was at a training recently and I used the annotation tool or the uh, the annotation tool on the mat connect in the notes application and what you do I'm just going to finish this up and I'll go back to the notes application and I'll, and I'll show you okay so here I've written graph one so that's the reference to my question that I had uh, so the teacher can go and reference that graph I can do the same for the second one, which is y is equal to cos, uh, x is equal to cos y, but it's the same procedure uh, that, that you use. So let's answer that question. If I go back to uh, my main carousel, a quick way to do this instead of using the back buttons is two fingers and just double tap on it and it goes directly to my main carousel. If I go back to my notes application, tap on here. I'm going to reopen my page that I, I created previously. I will select the pen and again tap on the pen once. You'll have a highlighter pen. Tap a second time you'll have a T uh, symbol on the icon and for the T symbol that's going to for the keyboard that's going to be used for the keyboard. I don't have a Bluetooth keyboard connected so you'll see a virtual keyboard pop up and you can use that. So press and hold on my note and uh, my keyboard just popped up. I can use that keyboard to enter some text and I can write really long notes on here. And that's what I was doing in my training is that I had this open, I had a Bluetooth keyboard connected to this uh, and I was taking all my notes 
And once my day was finished, I just sent my note into my page and my notes were all stored in my blank page. And like Roger was showing, you can highlight that text and anywhere I can be here. Once my text is highlighted or rectangle, uh, I can just do a pinch and zoom and it's gonna uh, modify uh, the, the, the size of that text. I don't need to be in that square in order to be doing the pinch and zoom because if I have some small text, I can't sometimes go in that box. So you can be anywhere to be able to perform that pinch and zoom. So that's the to answer the, um, uh, the question there. Fantastic. Um, yeah, so let me show you, uh, I was showing you how to set up your graphing calculator. If I go into my calculator application, which you can go and get from the main carousel, which is the last icon to the left, I tap on that. Here, my calculator is set to a standard interface. I don't have the option of doing a graph here, but um, I do ha have the possibility of changing that by tapping on the gear button, which is on the top right corner of the screen. And here, I got a couple of options. I got the mode option. I can change the grid color. Right now, my grid was in red. I can change that in all kinds of colors here. And I also have angles, uh, unit angles. So here in the unit angles, I can do some calculations in degrees, in radians, or in gradients, depending on the age of the student and what, 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 what we're trying to do. So if I go in mode, I tap on mode, there are three options for the calculator. You have a standard calculator, you have a scientific calculator, and you have a graphing calculator. So if I tap on either one, the checkbox will appear on the right-hand side of that option. And that will be my mode that when I'm gonna come back, it's gonna be in that mode. But let me just explain what standard means. Standard is a really standard operation calculator, uh, plus, minus, times, divided, that's all you have. Scientific, you'll have all the uh, extra functions like cosine, sines, logarithmic uh, functions, but it will not graph. You'll have the um, numerical value result. And graphing, you will well, you will see the graph uh, show up on uh, on the screen. And we're using here the uh, the the API or the SDK from Desmos Calculator. So for you of you for those of you who know Desmos, we're using the same SDK as Desmos Calculator. And to finish off, and before, I think we have a poll question after this, but to finish off, I just wanna show, uh, Roger was having a bit of problems um, <laughs> flipping pages in a book. So I just wanna show you the gesture and it's pretty simple. Let's say I have a, a right now I have a, a magazine right in front of me. When you flip a page, you go on the top and you flip the page, right? So you got this momentum, going either side by side or from top to bottom, but you have momentum while changing the page. It's the same procedure when you have a book and you wanna change page in a book, you have to have a certain velocity to that gesture. And let me just open a book here. And what you wanna do is really put a velocity inside that movement. I don't know if you notice, but I'm, gonna, I'm going a bit faster than what Roger was doing. So I just wanted to show a bit how to change pages. So it's really, I'm flipping pages. I'm really, really flipping physical pages. It's the same thing. <laughs> I want to tell you, I spent a lot of time practicing that this morning and I knew it was going to be a problem still for me. <laughs> it's just it. Awesome. So I think we have a poll question, right? We do. Yep. All right. Um, so we want to know, how frequently do you have students complete worksheet type activities using the Mat Connect? And your choices are never, daily, or weekly. How frequently do you have students complete worksheet type activities using the Mat Connect? Never, daily, or weekly? And while you're filling out that poll, again, feel free to drop any questions in our chat. All right, well, people are pretty on it getting this question answered. Take just a few more seconds to 
work on this poll question. All right, so with 100% having answered, how frequently do you have students complete worksheet type activities using the Mac Connect? 59% uh, said never, 24% said daily, and 18% said weekly. So uh, thank you guys for taking that poll question out. I'm gonna end the poll. And Roger, am I handing it back to you or to Eric? Yes, back to me, please. Great. Well, that was interesting poll results there. I'm glad that we covered that today in two different ways, at least uh, to, to complete worksheets or even downloaded books that have uh, fill in the blanks type of activities or uh, places to take notes. I think hopefully uh, those that are in attendance uh, uh, can, 60% you know, have never completed worksheets. So hopefully that's something that uh, you've picked up on today. Um, there are a couple of uh, other items uh, that uh, we wanted to cover today. Um, and one is a new addition uh, that will be to the right. Um, I'm in the uh, carousel right now. I'm gonna slide to the right and go to my settings. And uh, we have another new feature that we've added with the release. And again, this went live yesterday. So we'll talk a little bit about that in just a moment. Um, but I'm gonna tap on my settings from the carousel. And in my settings, I have user interface, audio and system, applications, exam mode, exit to Android if I wanna look, we haven't gone into Android today, but I'm gonna click on about um, to see what version I'm at. And at the very top, I'm in Prodigy 4.6, a bunch of other numbers after that at the top of the list there. That is up to date uh, with the update that came out yesterday. Um, here I can select voices, OCR and so forth. But if I scroll down in my about menu at the very bottom, there's a new option there. And uh, I wanna talk a little bit about this and it's called usage data. Let me open that up. Um, and because when I updated, I turned mine on, right now it says anonymous usage data is on. And I can change that setting. So I'm going to go ahead and change it. Uh, and this is what it would look like by default. So, um, and I'll talk about the upgrade in just a moment, but basically um, when your system updates uh, with 4.6, at the end of that, um, installation or update process, this screen will be presented to you. And this is the opportunity for you to opt in to sharing some data about how uh, Prodigy is being used. So I'm gonna tap there and here we'll open up in a reading mode where you can read through uh, a little bit about the information that we would like to start to gathering. Um, but basically it's, uh, anonymized information uh, that include does not does not include let's let's start there does not include name age anything like that usernames any of that information uh, but it's things such as what is the reading speed that your unit is set at what uh, is the preferred magnification level uh, what color contrasts are being used which text-to-speech is being used, which OCR is being used, um, and items of that nature, so that we can begin to understand the tools as well as the different features that are being used on the system. Um, and it's sort of a, a snapshot, so it's not a track over time, it's a snapshot of the setup of the, the device as it is right now. And it is an opt-in statement that will appear at the end of the update process. So you can choose yes or no at that point. We hope that most will choose yes. Um, and this will help uh, us to understand how the device is being used and help inform you know, where we need to pay attention uh, for future development uh, of the Prodigy and the Mac Connect. Um, and Somewhere down the line in the future, we hope to make it even more robust to report uh, information back to you. And I know for, for sure that both Eric and I would love to hear from any of you, um, and you can funnel through our friends at APH as well, um, what you would like to see in any sort of uh, data reporting that we could bring back to you uh, as we grow into this. So again, it's, it's totally anonymous. Uh, it's just basic use of how the uh, system is set up. 
Um, and initially it will be used to help guide us in making uh, development decisions. Um, so I'm gonna click yes again on mine, and now I will be sharing data and we'll just shoot a snapshot back to me in an anonymous fashion or back to our, uh, to our servers. Um, Eric, I didn't know if you wanted to add anything more about, uh, about the metrics. Nope, you said it all. Okay, uh, so for those of you uh, that might be looking to update your units, um, and you should be prompted uh, when you turn it on, but in case you are not, uh, in the settings menu, about what, four, a third down uh, in your list is a systems option. You can tap there and you'll have your Wi-Fi set up, your Bluetooth set up, and the third option down is software update, which you can tap on. And assuming that you're connected to the internet, it will check to see if there's an update available. Again, in my case, there is not, but if there was one, you would have the option to go ahead and install that update. Again, that should happen automatically, you should be notified um, that it's available, but just in case you want to check, you can go into settings, scroll to, or go down to system, and then go to software update, and it will check for you there. So with that, when, one, when will be the, um, the update? When will it be available? This update was made available yesterday afternoon about 4 p.m. So hopefully some folks have seen that come in already. Awesome. Um, so uh, with that, I'm gonna to toss it back over to Paul. I think you have some closing items to share, yeah? Sure, we can share those as long as there's nothing else in the chat or any other questions that we need to answer. Yeah, uh, Roger, do you mind going through the version 4.6 updates? Sure. So again, we've covered uh, these today in today's uh, webinar. Um, so the first items that we shared had to do with uh, downloaded books. So essentially, we've added uh, this go to page, go to page functionality uh, to enhance what was previously only a table of contents navigation to now where you can select specific pages by typing in a page number or scrolling a list to finding a specific page and tapping onto it to go to a specific page. Uh, then we covered the bookmark tools that can be used to uh, pick up uh, and leave off in different locations. They could be used to um, organize as advanced organizers for I need to do uh, this section of reading on this date, this section of reading on another date. Um, uh, in different ways like that. And then we covered markup, uh, which crossed over uh, not only from the books, but it is new to downloaded books, the ability to uh, use a pen to write on about with your finger or a stylus uh, to highlight text and to insert text notes in downloaded books. Um, and those were pre-existing functionalities in both the notes and the gallery uh, that Eric shared with you. Um, then Eric shared his calculator. Um, and showed how to annotate or append uh, worksheets uh, with, with graphs from the graphing calculator, as well as the uh, three different calculators that are available. And I believe when he turned it on, he had it in a contrast mode with a yellow uh, contrast with black uh, text on his calculator. And then lastly, uh, what I just shared a moment ago uh, is uh, you know, that opt-in uh, to share uh, some basic, very basic anonymous usage metrics with us to help uh, us to develop the product going in the future. The last thing I wanna do so I'm going to throw into the chat um, is a link uh, that you can copy if you want that will, um, we already have videos up to review again how to, how to perform uh, these annotations in downloaded books. Um, but there, there are also many other videos, I think nearly 30 of them that are available um, that cover other skills as well as these webinars that we've hosted, uh, co-hosted um, with APH. So there's uh, both tutorial type, uh, short one to five minute videos, and then uh, full free form videos such as the one we've done today that you can use to review uh, today's contents and, and previous uh, webinars. All right, thank you very much, Roger. So let's talk about what we've discovered and learned today. Uh, first of all, as we've said on multiple occasions, version 4.6 of the software, it's now available. It's been available for not quite one full day. If your Mac Connect's been turned on, you probably got a notification. Uh, if not, then maybe the next time you turn it on, you'll get that notification if you don't go ahead and update manually, as I just showed you how to do. Uh, your system should prompt you to update automatically. If it doesn't, don't worry about it. You can get it easily. 
go through those steps and it should download it with no problem. You can search for the update under settings, then go to system, then software update. Uh, these updates are going to enable students to extend their learning activities on the Mat Connect, and we hope you find them useful and uh, make great use out of them. And finally, one last look at the Mat Connect. Um, got a picture of it there for you. Uh, the price for everyone, whether you're on quota or not, is now three thousand two hundred and twenty dollars. Uh, and uh, we'd be happy to answer questions or these guys would an can answer questions for you. APH customer service, depending on, on what kind of question you have. Um, we will put the link here in the chat so you can get to the page for the Mat Connect. And uh, we hope that you're successful with using all these new features.